G'day, my name's Gordon Deadman and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. Today I'm in the Bahamas on the lovely island of Princess Keys and today we're going to be having a look at how to open a coconut the traditional way using a sharpened stick. In Samoa and other tropical regions around the world the coconut palm is known as the tree of life. Its leaves and branches can be used for shelter building, matting and flooring, cordage and cooking. The coconut husk is a great source of fire tinder and the coconut itself is a drink and a meal all in one. It really is the tree of life. Unless you have a machete, trying to open a mature brown coconut with a small knife like this is close to impossible. So what I've done, I've gone around and I've found myself a stick. It can be a green one or it could be a dead one. If you find a sharpened one, that's great already, like a sharpened tree root or something that's already naturally sharp is ideal. If it's not sharp and you don't have even a small knife, you can ground it against a rock until it becomes uh, reasonably sharp. Failing that, if you do have some form of cutting, cutting tool, you can sharpen a stake at least to, which is gonna be a lot more easy to sharpen a stake than it is to try and use that to prize the uh, coconut from the husk. So what I've done, I've found myself a stake, I've sharpened it, I've got my coconut. Now, a coconut has three corners. And what we're going to do is using one of those corners, I'm going to penetrate the husk around one of those corners and then using leverage, I'm going to lever that husk off. And what we're gonna be left with is the uh, coconut itself. So I locate one of the corners and I drive that onto the stake. And what we're left with is the coconut itself. There are two methods that enable us to get inside to get to the precious water inside a coconut. Now, you'll notice that the coconut has two eyes and a mouth. Between the two eyes, there's a line that runs right across the cranium. One of the methods involves cracking with a piece of st a stone or a bit of coral across that to split the coconut in half. But in doing so, there's a tendency to lose a lot of that precious liquid. So a safer way to extract the liquid from there first before we crack it open, because we can actually uh, use the meat inside as a food source, a safer way to not waste any of that liquid is to punch a hole into the mouth. Now, out of those three holes, the mouth is the softest one. So if we can sharpen a stick, which I've done here, and punch that into the mouth, we're going to be, be able to create a hole and we're going to be able to drink the liquid, liquid from that hole. So I've got myself a sharpened stick, sharpened that, and I'm now going to punch that into that hole. Making sure it's the mouth, not the eyes. Hold that there. It goes in quite easily because that is soft. The mouth is the softest part. And what I need to do is I'm just 
wiggling that around inside that hole so that we can make that quite wide because what happens if we can't get any air in there in the drink as you'll know just like uh, when you drink a bottle of water if no air can get in the side it doesn't come out very far so I'm trying to create a nice wide hole in there to allow air to get inside and enable that to run freely into my mouth Now it's a lot harder to do this with the eyes, so you really have to make sure that you get the uh, mouth. And as you can see, there's our hole. Now I can have a drink of that precious liquid. And that is absolutely delicious. Now once we've actually got the liquid out of the coconut itself, we've had our drink, now is a safer time to crack this open because we're not going to waste any. Now when you see the Samoans do it, they are real experts at um, de-husking coconuts and uh, cracking these. They actually have competitions to do it and they can do it in under, under a minute. It's quite amazing. So in order to crack this, I've just, we now know his mouth, we've just punctured a hole in his mouth. I'm looking for the line between the two eyes. I'm then going to take my piece of coral, which is what I have in this case, and I'm going to be looking to strike the coconut smartly across the skull between those two eyes. Now depending, every coconut's different, sometimes you have to give it a couple of whacks, and work your way around. Sometimes it happens first go. It really depends on the rock, your aim, and the coconut itself. But let's give it a go and see what happens. There we go. There's our coconut. And this is a feed in itself absolutely beautiful this is the coconut meat take my knife I can just cut some strips off that mm. doesn't get any fresher than that very high in vitamins and minerals and nutrients. Coconut is wonderful. Now, when it comes to drinking coconut milk, there's been many examples of uh, downed pilots in World War II that happened to be uh, shot down and luckily found their way to an island and one of the only forms of fresh water or fresh liquid they could find was coconut juice. However, there is a downside to um, coconut juice. If you drink too much and too many coconuts, it acts as a laxative. And in a survival situation, it's a fine line between drinking water and drinking too much liquid that's going to create diarrhea. Because obviously once you get diarrhea, you're going to die, um, dehydrate very quickly. So that's something to be aware of. But that meat itself, is delicious. Now, in Samoa, in order, they create a thing called coconut milk. And in order to create coconut milk, you need to then take this uh, meat, which is put over a grater. It's grated many times to produce like, like you would cheese. And then those gratings are then put inside a bit of material or traditionally it was actually put inside a bit of a coconut husk and wrung out and the material that is in the liquid that's extracted from that is coconut milk and it is my favorite 
out of all of the parts of the coconut. It is absolutely delicious. So in order to show you how we extract the coconut milk from the coconut, I've come to a different area. And firstly, I've found myself another stick. This happens to be an old fence post by the look of it. I've, on one end, I've sharpened it to a chisel, like we did our other stick. And on the other end, I've sharpened into a chisel, but using the saw on my multi-tool, I've cut some notches into it. Now, one of the, uh, the end is broken off, and that's going to act like a cheese grater. Well, that's the theory anyway. So the other end is like just a, 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 a straight blunt chisel end. I found a low tree with like a, a wedge in it, as well as a couple of pieces of coral. And that's going to enable me to sit on this and use it as a chair, mainly so that this, uh, our bit of board doesn't move. I also have a bandana because that's going to collect our coconut gratings as well as a container to collect the coconut milk in that we extract. I've got a different coconut because I ate the other one and uh, unfortunately this one didn't, didn't crack as well as I'd like the, as well as the other one did. So that might make that a little bit harder but still we should be able to demonstrate how we get the coconut meat. So I'm going to climb aboard my stick, ensuring that doesn't move, so I've got good downward pressure, and what I'm going to do is I just stick that over the end, and just simply grate like that all the way around. Now the Samoan men can do this very, very quickly. It's all about having the right tool for the job. This isn't ideal. But there's it's, uh, it's no other way of doing it really. I'm going to try the um, the other end to see if that's any better. But as you can see, that's getting like a shaved coconut there. I can tell you, mm, that's very nice. And when we extract the juice from that, it really is quite a remarkable taste. This would be a lot easier if the uh, if this coconut had meant actually managed to split completely in half. It's actually the shape of the coconut that's making this more difficult than it should be. But in bushcraft and out in the wild, things don't happen the way you want them to all the time. You just have to work with what you've got. So I've finished grating this, and that's the amount of coconut gratings we've got from the meat. It's quite a bit. And what we're now going to do is leaving that inside the bandana, we're going to squeeze the milk that will come from this into our container. Traditionally, Samoans would use the coconut husk for this. So collecting our coconut shavings, I put it in my inside my bandana. And then I just simply wring that into our container. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of milk coming out of that. Well, I've expressed the milk from our coconut gratings, and we've probably got, I'd say about 20 mil of liquid in there, as we can see, but the proof is in the tasting, and I can smell it already. It is absolutely delicious. If you could only taste that, that is magnificent. It's beautiful, it's sweet, it really is tremendous. And what the Samoans would do, they would wrap this in little um, coconut palm leaf bundles and banana leaf bundles 
and they would cook this. They would put this coconut milk inside fish and then steam the fish and it tastes absolutely delicious. The Thais use coconut milk to cook with all the time. In fact, one of my favorite foods is Thai green chicken curry, which uses lots of coconut milk. Really is a marvelous way of extracting the milk from the coconut shavings. Mm. And after you've finished drinking the milk, you can eat the uh, coconut shavings as well. They're not as fresh as they were, but we can also use those in cooking as well. Really, coconuts really are tremendous. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode on how to process a coconut in the traditional island way. My name's Gordon Deadman and I look forward to seeing you again on another episode of Bushcraft Survival.